Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. At least one's connected and excited and still breathing. How are the rest of you? Do you know what's really interesting? That that young lady in Zimbabwe has just picked up her first profit share check at the rally in Sun City. The only person from Zimbabwe to pick up a profit share check. It's amazing what two days of input can mean to somebody who's on purpose, committed, and wanting to build a forever business. Are you on purpose? Are you committed? Are you wanting to build your forever business? This side are. Not certain about that side. Okay, they are. Not certain about you now. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the people in the middle. <laughs> Okay, just having a bit of fun. Got to have a bit of fun in all that you do. Lots of people ask myself and John, how did you get to Diamond? What did you do? And I'm, I really think that some people think that we do something different to all of you in this room. We've been involved in Forever Living now for, gosh, 17 years. And when I say that, two things happen. First of all, I'm incredibly proud to have been involved for uh, 17 years, and secondly, it makes me feel very old. <laughs> so, but I'm really privileged to be with the company because the products keep us looking young and amazing. Adam sent through some pictures the other day of us from many years ago when we were traveling on one of our forever trips. And uh, I must admit, I think we look better now than we did then, which is a great testimony to the products. We join Forever Living to be successful. Why did you join? It's an interesting question, isn't it? We didn't join forever to fail. We didn't join to give it a go. We joined to be successful. The minute that we registered on that application form, we had done our research, we had had our questions answered, and we were ready to build an awesome business. Now, I have to tell you, when we first joined, there was no infrastructure in place in the company, as such as there is now. Um, and John and I decided that we would just go for it. We just decided to go for it. Not to question anything, just to look, not to look left or right, but to focus on building a manager business fast. We joined Forever in the middle of August, and we went manager by the end of November. So in less than 16 weeks, we achieved the manager position. Now, I have to be honest with you, it was literally all out massive action, no structure, didn't really consider what we were doing. It was just people and case credits and movement of product. And whilst that is a fantastic way to get to manager by just the energy and the passion and the being on purpose, the one thing that did happen to us the month after we went manager is because we had no infrastructure, because we didn't understand about building strong legs. What happened is, the month after we went manager, our check dropped. Because I'd made, John and I had made ourselves the issue. You know, we would do anything to generate the volume to get to manager, rather than generating and developing people beneath us to get to manager. And what happened was, we very quickly realized that if we were going to build a significant business, that we had to implement structure, and we had to implement discipline, and we had to implement some tracks to run on. Now, what you see today that we use to develop businesses is something called the Teach to Reach Manual. And this really is just a, a rebirth, if you like, of what we all put together in the early days. And it's just grown and developed and grown and developed and grown and developed and kept pace with the modern world that we live in today. So why do we use a system in order to get through to manager really, really quickly? Well, the first thing is, obviously, it gives us tracks to run on. But the most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, it creates discipline and good habits. You've got to have good habits. Daily activity, weekly activity, monthly activity, 
Activity with the products, activity with your team, activity with your personal recruiting. And if you're just running around doing a lot, hoping it's all going to come together, it might do, as it did for us, but it might well not sustain going forward. So the planning system that we use is a very, very simple way to create habit, discipline, and give us tracks to run on. So how do we create new managers? How many people in this room would like to be a manager? How many people in this room would like to create many managers? Because trust me, it's about becoming a manager, but ultimately it's about developing managers. If you want to become senior, soaring, sapphire, diamond, sapphire, diamond, and beyond, you've got to be able to focus on the basics and develop people. So the very first thing that I do when I sit down with somebody in the developing the manager process is I'm absolutely committed and focused on finding out why that person is doing forever. I want to find out what's going on in their heads. I want to find out what motivates them and inspires them. I want to find out what excites them. And when we're looking at goal setting, there's several areas to look at goal setting, or the why. The first area is personal and family goals. And the second area is what we call the business goals. Now, what's really interesting is the personal and family goals will determine the business goal, but it's the business goal that will make sure and guarantee that the personal and family goal is achieved. So you can't set goals in one area. You've got to focus on setting goals in many areas. And you've got to take this exercise really, really seriously. If you don't spend time really focusing on why you are building a business, then I promise you, your attitude will not be of one to succeed. It will be one of, I'm going to give it a go. And so when I'm sitting down with somebody, a short-term goal, a six to 18-month goal, that's what we call short-term. The long-term goals are more like two to seven years and beyond. But a short-term goal could be somebody wants to make £2,000 a month. It could be that they want time with the children. It could be that they are, want to go on a holiday. It could be a camping holiday. It could be a Disney-type holiday. Whatever the type of holiday is, it needs to be extrapolated from their minds and put into the manual. It could be that they want to go out and eat at a nice restaurant every single month. I remember when we first joined Forever Living, taking the kids out was quite a big goal for us. And at the time, we were quite broke when we joined Forever. And uh, a night out was uh, the little chef on the A5, just outside of Milton Keynes. Uh, I can promise you it's a bit better than that now. We go to the A5 on the M4. On, no. <laughs> um, it could be that you want to uh, go out and see a show once a month. It could be that you want to pay the school fees. Goals are peculiar to you. It's what you're prepared to work for. It's what you're prepared to give something up for. If we look at, if we look at a more long-term goal, it could be that you want to make a six-figure income. How many people in this room would love to make a six-figure income? But are you serious about that? Or are you just thinking, yeah, it sounds good, I wouldn't mind it? Or are you like I was and many of the leaders in the room and John, where we say, we are prepared to do whatever it takes to make that six-figure income? Now let's ask the same question. Who's prepared in this room to do whatever it takes? So it's really interesting how not so many hands go up. Because in order to get from here to six figures, you've got to put some work in. And you've got to work a process. It could be that a more long-term goal is you want to quit the day job. How many people in a job? Just over broke? How many of you would love to sack the boss? Have you made a plan to make that happen? Is it detailed, in depth? Do you know when the time of that is? Because this is what we have to focus on. It could be that you want to be full-time in forever. It's fantastic being full-time in forever. You decide the hours you want to work. You decide who you work with. You decide where you work. Imagine building a global business. We're off to Italy next week. We have explosive growth in Italy right now. We're off to Zimbabwe in July. We choose where we want to go with, where we want to go to work. And when you're full-time in forever, you can have that luxury as well. 
And when I'm sitting down with a brand new person, I begin to plant the seed of an idea in their mind as to what is possible. Sometimes you have to help people expand their thinking. Could be that you want to travel the world. Who wants to travel the world? It's really nice. It's really, really, really nice. Who wants to travel the world for free? That's really nice as well. Forever really do spoil you when you travel. Could be that you want to be mortgage-free. Who likes to be mortgage-free? That makes a really big difference for a lot of people. It could be that you want a new Maserati. You can have a Maserati whenever you want one. You just can't get it down our drive. <laughs> it's too wide. <laughs> it could be that you want time with the family. Time is probably one of the most valuable commodities that we have our hands on. It's only 24 hours in a day. We can't buy time, we can't recreate it. So therefore, we have to put a, a business in place and an income in place that is going to give us the freedom to do what we want, when we want, with who we want. When our family ring up and say they'd like us to go and travel with them, to go and have a weekend with them, to go to the house in France with them, we're always there. When the kids were growing up, John and I were the only parents on the rugby pitch every single week. When our son played rugby for Wales, right up to 21s, we traveled the world with him, watching him play rugby. Somebody in a J-O-B could not do that. And that's why we join forever to be successful. And when I'm working with brand new people, I want to know what they want and what they're prepared to do in order to be successful. To be free. To never worry when a bill drops on the mat. To never worry when the car breaks down. To never worry when there may be a health issue and you need to have an operation. To never worry at Christmas time or birthday times. To never look at the price of anything when you go shopping. To never look at the right-hand side of a menu when you're in a restaurant. To be free. To do the things you want to do. But there's a price to be paid. It doesn't come without some blood, sweat and tears. Once you've identified personal and family goals, both short-term and long-term, then clearly we need to identify some of the business goals. And the business goals could be short-term, manager in five months. It's a great goal. Manager in five months. It could be, I want to be making at least a thousand pounds a month part-time within four months. It could be, uh, I want to run successful trainings for my team. It could be that you want to develop two managers as quickly as possible that you've recruited. And those are what I call short-term business goals. If we're looking at more long-term goals, it could be that somebody wants to be Sapphire in three years. What about 10 to 20,000 pounds a month within three years? What about car plan level three? Imagine having your car or one of your cars paid for, paid for every single month, every single year by the company. Imagine being able to drive the car you want, not the car that you have to have. That's exciting, right? What about profit share and global travel? Who wants a profit share check? Who really wants one? Okay, Roger, I've got my eye on you, okay? <laughs> but profit share opens up a whole new dimension to forever. But you need to be planning it and thinking about it and getting curious about it and getting frustrated about it and looking at the activity you need to be doing right now, today. Not thinking it's for other people, not for me. It's really interesting what happens when you begin to focus on something. Really interesting what happens. People come into your life you never dreamt you'd meet. Situations happen that open doors to business you never dreamt would happen. But only if you start getting focused on some of the bigger goals. You see, bigger goals create energy, momentum, excitement, passion. Little goals are fine, but little goals do not create the same momentum as the big goals do. 
What we're looking for as we begin to open people's minds as to why they're doing forever is to look very, very closely at what they need right now. Right now. When I've done my goal setting session with a brand new person, I'll help them empty their head of everything that's important to them. I'll get them thinking about things they didn't even know that were important to them. I'll get them emotionally connected to those things. And I will then say there are two types of goals. There are the want goals and there are the need goals. The want goals are the things that you want in life over the next three, four, five, six, seven years. The need goals are the goals that have to happen in the next six months. And so a need goal could be that you have to be making 2000 a month by the end of the year and that you want to be manager within five months. I think they're pretty good need goals, don't you? But you have to establish what the need goals are, and then you have to ask a question. And the question is very, very, very simple. The question could be, Roger, I know that you're really, really excited about building a business that can give you profit share. Is that right? And in receiving a profit share check, I know that money is going to give you the time to spend time in South Africa and time here. Is that right? So I'm getting him to commit to his goal and to come back to me in a positive response. The question is, Roger, are you prepared to work closely with me and do whatever it takes, come what may, in order to put the infrastructure in place to give you a profit share check, the time that you need both here and in South Africa with your family? I know. (laughs) So I'm going to ask you again, are you serious about that? Are you ready to go to work? Now, I will never, ever do a goal-setting session without getting that positive commitment, that positive affirmation with that person looking me in the eye and saying yes. And the reason why I do that is because what I'm looking for is an emotional connection. I'm looking for him to get emotional about the thing that he's prepared to work for. Not me. It's what he's prepared to work for. It's what he's prepared to get up an hour earlier in the morning for, stay up an hour later at night for. He's what he's prepared for you to give up for, turn the television off, stop reading the newspapers, maybe give up some socializing. But I know that by a lot of hard work and focus, that within six to 12 months, we can have a profit share structure in place for you, Roger. You ready to go to work with that? So I keep connecting him back to his goal. It's very, very important. You've got to keep connecting that person back to their goal. They didn't join the business for what I want. They joined the business for what they want. You have to remember that every single time. If you want to develop managers, they're joining the business for their reason. And if you don't connect them to that emotionally, what will happen is they'll do a bit, they'll give it a go, they'll have a try, They'll face the rejection, they'll look at the little word no, they'll have a few no's, and what they'll do is they'll fall into selling product because it's easier. That's what will happen if someone's not emotionally connected to a goal. When John and I first joined Forever, we were broke. I mean, we had £37 in the bank, we'd been repossessed, times were tough, it was hard, but we're no quitters. And when we joined Forever, we needed money to feed the kids. Four kids at home, they don't take any prisoners They open the fridge and they go, Mum, there's no food, why? So we needed money, but my goal, my emotional goal that would get me tearful, that would keep me up at night, that would keep me out there talking to people no after no after no after no after no, was I wanted to educate the kids privately. Funny, really, when I haven't got enough money to pay the rent, I wanted the kids in private school, but here's the thing. Within seven, eight, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Within nine months of joining the business, both boys were at top public schools. It wasn't an accident. It was an emotional connection to something that I was prepared to work for. Not John. His goal was different. He wanted time. He wanted time to be with the kids and not be stuck in a nine, uh, well, a seven till seven job. You see, so even if you're in a marriage, a relationship. Your goals will be different, and you have to respect that. 
We once had a couple in our, well, we still have a couple in our team, and they're senior managers, and their business had plateaued at senior manager for 12 months. Nothing was happening. They weren't growing. The non-manager business wasn't growing. They weren't achieving. They were getting irritated with each other. They were getting nitpicky with each other. And one day, I sat her down, and I said, what's the problem? Let's look at your goals. And her goals were amazing. She wanted a brand new horse box. She wanted to go eventing. She was really into her horses. Goals were phenomenal. Couldn't understand why she wasn't achieving. Went to the husband, sat down with him. His goals were amazing. He wanted a house in France. He wanted a little bit of a vineyard. He wanted to grow lemon trees. I thought, his goals are amazing. What's the problem? And he said to me, I hate bloody horses. And she said to me, I hate the French. <laughs> so we had a bit of a problem there. So we have to respect that everybody has a different goal, whether you're in a relationship or not. And it's bringing the commitment to those goals together, whatever they mean for you. That's the most important thing. So goal setting is about having clarity on what you want. And that clarity has to be gut-wrenchingly embedded inside you. And sometimes when you have a goal and they're time monitored, the clock's ticking. You know, my goal was to get the kids in private school. And if I didn't make the money to get them in in September, I had to wait a term. Because you can't put them in school halfway through a term. So I had a real sense of urgency. What was really interesting is I broke my goal down into how much money I needed to make a month. It's a lot of money sending kids to private school, as many of you know. I then broke that down into what I needed to make a week, what I needed to make a day. I then reworked it back up as to what activity I needed to do to make that money on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So it was no accident. I had complete clarity on what I was trying to achieve. And when you're working with a brand new person, the best advice I can give you is help them in the first 30 to 60 days have clarity, have emotional connection, and a vision for what they're prepared to work for. It's what they're prepared to work for. I had the privilege of working with a, an amazing young couple yesterday up at Longbridge. And uh, it was just so exciting sitting with them. A young couple, newly married, goals and hopes and dreams. Maybe a little bit cautious, not quite knowing what they got involved in, but very, very excited about building a future for themselves. And I know with absolute passion and conviction that if they follow the process, forever will never let them down. Now, here's what you have to do when you're working with a new distributor. You have to believe in them while they're believing in themselves. And you have to allow your belief, your passion, your conviction, your energy flow through to them. Because if they believe in you, they'll follow you. But if they don't believe in you, they won't. The point I'm making here is unless your goals are clear, unless you know where you're going, unless you're excited about your journey, how can you expect someone to follow you and be excited about their journey? We're very fortunate in that we're diamond managers. Actually, we're not fortunate. We work very, 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 very hard to get there. And one could say, well... You've had the top profit share check. You've got a beautiful home. You've got a house in the south of France. You've educated the kids. You've sorted the family out. You're financially secure. Everything's in place. You've got your charity in Malawi. You've got your worldwide business. You're kind of there. But John and I just had a few days off, and we went to an event, nothing to do with forever living, but with our passion, which is travel. And my goodness, within three days, I had got even more huge, massive goals. Because life is too short to have arrived before it's your time to go. Life is too short for you to have arrived before it's your time to go. We have to be on purpose with something. And initially, it's the need, what I need right now. Then it's the want. Then it's how can I contribute and help others. And I know that when we were in South Africa in February, we only had two days with the leaders in February myself and John, but in those two days, Roger, you were with us. We had the most amazing time, didn't we? We had a great time. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> but our team has exploded out there because of two days of intense training 
and opening the minds of people that are hungry for success. And a lot of what I'm sharing with you right now, we trained it that day. It's down to you as to what you want to do with it. So once I've gone through the why, and I've connected them emotionally, and I've got them excited, and they've told me they're prepared to do whatever they have to do to be successful, I quite simply go through the marketing plan. Because it's really important that they understand visually and connect visually of what they have to do. And the reason I spend a lot of time on this probably is because of me. Because I'm number dyslexic. And I have a struggle, a hard time with figures and percentages and numbers. And when I see a marketing plan and when I see case credits and, and when I see all this kind of four CCs and 13 and 18 and 5 and 10 and 120 and 75 more, oh, I'm just gone. Because I'm not a digital. So if someone can show me a position on the plan that is going to give me what I want, then I go, fine, I can do that. More people are visual than they are digital, so show them the marketing model. Show them the importance of developing a 4CC business. Show them where those CCs are going to come from. It's the balance of retailing, of using, and recruiting. And I would suggest you keep that volume in balance. Too much retailing, no recruiting, you won't build a business. Too much recruiting and not underpinning it with the movement of product, and you won't achieve the big events and the big incentives. And if you don't use the product, how can you look somebody in the eye with belief and passion and say, they work for me, they work for my family, I'm sure they can make a difference for you. For myself, if I'm working with somebody, and John is the same, and I know a lot of the leads are the same, I personally can't afford to give my time to somebody who won't at least focus on the basics of the business, and that's four case credits. So for me, when I'm working with somebody, four case credits is a given, it's an expectation, it must happen, and if you don't want to do four case credits, that's fine, but I can't work with somebody that won't commit to doing the very minimum that the company asks us to do. It's a mindset. It's a discipline. Because when I first looked at Forever, and I pretended I understood the marketing plan, I nodded in the right places and ummed and ahed and, you know, I looked as if I understood it all. And when we got home, I said, John, what the hell was that all about? But the one thing that did strike in my mind was, our sponsor Chris said one thing to us. He said, the company make no requirements of you. You can do as much or as little as you want. It's entirely up to you. I thought, okay, it's fine. He said, but if you want to build a massive business around the world and here in the UK and get paid on it, you've got to be four case credit active. I thought, okay. What's a case credit? How do I do that? Show me. And so we broke it down. Use it, retail it, recruit it. Never missed four case credits in 17 years. Never. In fact, most months we do eight, nine, ten case credits. I never have ever done 4.01. That is just working to the minimum. <laughs> If you're on purpose in the business, you will do a lot, lot more than four CCs. And it's a habit that you need to focus on and that you need to really focus on achieving every month. And I will get that commitment from my new distributor as I begin to go through the marketing model. Now, I haven't got time to explain how the whole marketing model works, but what I do with a new distributor is I literally talk them through step by step by step how they get from distributor, assistant supervisor, through to manager. And I quite simply say, as you're aware, Roger, you've now registered with the company. Once you've registered with the company, you get a unique business license to trade with forever around the world. Be careful of the words you're using. It's not just an ID number. It's a business license to work around the world with forever living. How many people in this room know someone in another country? You could all go global tonight. Do you know that? You could all pick up the phone, send a text message, send an email, have a Skype call. You could introduce someone to the concept of forever tonight and go global. But only if you've got your international business building number, your license. I then talk a little bit about the fact that uh, when someone's registered with the company, they buy their box, they buy their starter box, they buy it at a massive 15% discount. That moves them, moves them straight through to the position of assistant supervisor. 
An assistant supervisor is somebody that now buys everything at wholesale, which is 30% discount. And at the end of the month, they get a 5% bonus of the retail value of all of their wholesale orders. Which means that, you need to use these words a lot, which means that, Roger, you're being paid on the retail value, although your business is only on the wholesale value. Which means that your check's going to be bigger. At the end of the month, the com uh, whenever you recruit somebody, the company will also pay you the difference between the box they purchase at 15% and the position you're on. So if you're an assistant supervisor and you recruit a brand new person, every person you recruit, you make £39. Which means that if you recruit three people in the month, you've made nearly £120. But it's what those three people do to develop the business, which is exciting. I then go through to the position of supervisor, talk about the difference on the percentages there. I go through to the position of assistant manager, and I talk about the percentages and the difference there, and how much money you make, about six, seven hundred pounds on your bonus, plus your 30% wholesale retail. I then get through to the position of manager. And this is the position that I spend a lot of time focusing on, talking about, getting them to understand visually as to what a manager business looks like. And to give you some idea, I share, I share experiences of other people. I share my story, but I share experience of other people. Some people have gone to manager in six weeks. Some people have gone to manager in six months. Some people have taken a year. What we need to do is we need to get a, a, a plan in place for you to be manager within the next five to six months. Is that fair? I'm getting agreement. Is that fair? Is that okay? Do you understand? Do you get it? Do you see what I mean? I'm getting lots and lots of agreement. That's what we're looking for. Because when someone's agreeing, mentally they're connecting with you. If you're just talking to somebody and not pausing and asking for them to interact with you, you'll lose them. And then what I do when I get to the manager position, I then say, this manager position, Roger, is going to give you that need goal of £2,000 a month that you talked about. And obviously, from there on in, we can put the structure in place for you to build the profit share check, which is going to give you the time to have with your family here and in South Africa. Are you okay with that? And all I do then is I just reconnect him with the goals that are important to him. So, for example, on this example, it could be that we, we you know, it could be that We've talked about time, we've talked about money, and we've talked about his mortgage. Those could be his three goals. So I've started with the goal, I've shown the business model, and I'm ending with connecting the business model to the goal. Simple. It's so, so simple. But only if you practice. You've got to practice. It doesn't happen overnight. Trust me, I'm very good at practicing. On the dog, on the kids. My kids could explain the marketing plan when they were seven because they weren't allowed to have their pocket money until I had explained the marketing plan to them. <laughs> and I will never forget one day going to leave the kids with my elderly mother-in-law. She must have been about 75, 76 then. Sorry if I'm offending anybody who's that age. She wasn't elderly at all, not at all, with my mother-in-law. And she said to me, what are you and John doing exactly? And my little boy said, don't worry, Nana, I'll show you. <laughs> so he takes out a piece of paper and he said, this is mum and dad. He put us in a box. And he said, and they've got lots of baubles underneath them. And he said, and these baubles do case credits. And when they do 120, all these baubles together, they're a manager. And I thought, out of the mouths of babes, he was about seven or eight. No, he's a bit old, he's about 10. It was amazing. So it's practice, 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 practice. Diana said it earlier, without practicing your communication skills, nothing is going to happen. But if you want to be a manager or develop a manager, you've got to practice this. So we've now got our new distributor focused on manager. They understand why manager is important. You've taken them right through the schematic of the business model, and you've got them really, really excited about that position. Now, what I do now is I talk about the power of five. When I'm working with a brand new distributor, I will now say, in order to achieve the manager position quickly, we're looking to find five key people as quickly as possible. Five key people. Now, a key person is not somebody who's registered, bought a box, 
and as a district assistant supervisor. That's not key. I've had many people come to me and say, I've got my five. What are they doing? Well, they're not doing anything yet, but I've got my five. <laughs> Anybody had any of those? Yeah, I think Mandy mentioned it, gone to combi, combi whatever, planet combi. A key person is someone who's joined forever to be successful. A key person is somebody who has committed and taken the time to put their goals and dreams on paper. A key person is somebody who is committed to working the marketing model. And a key person is somebody who is committed to taking action every single day, even if they've only got half an hour a day to moving their business forward. You see, don't fall into the trap of thinking building a business has to be full time on day one. When John and I started, John was still working full time. I was farming. I was working very long hours and we had four kids at home. And we started the business in the nooks and crannies, maybe 10, 12 hours a week. And we still went manager within 16 weeks because we were on purpose. In those few hours, precious hours that we had, we did more than an hour's work in an hour. Does that make sense? So I didn't fall into the trap too often of the washing, the lawn, the beds, the cleaning. It was all about being on purpose, being on focus on where we're going. And the reason that I talk about the power of five to my new distributor is on day one, I want them thinking about profit share and travel. On day one. On day one, I am going to open the mind of the person I'm sitting with. They won't understand it. They won't get it all. But let me tell you something. When you believe in somebody and you share with them that you believe they can be successful and build a profit share business and ex access the travel and build all their goals and dreams and achieve it all, guess how they feel? Amazing. I think about all of you in a job. Do you feel amazing at work? Sorry? <laughs> Don't you feel wonderful at work? Can't you just wait for the alarm clock to go off in the morning? Can't you just wait to leap out of bed? In fact, can't you get out of bed before the alarm clock goes off and say, can't wait to get to work? No? Same old, same old. Believe in people immediately. Now, the power of five. I want my new distributor to go manager within five to seven months. If they take longer, that's fine. I don't mind, as long as they're doing the activity. Diana said that it was eight months after she became a supervisor that she went manager. You see, I don't mind as long as you've got a plan and as long as you're working the plan. Plans can be adjusted, but you've got to have the plan in place. If you haven't got a plan, how do you know what to do tomorrow? If you haven't got a plan, how do you know to move forward? And what I'm looking for within their first six to seven months, is I'm looking for them to ask their five key people to identify two that are also keen to go manager. Because my vision, when I'm working with a key player, my vision for them is that within their first 12 months, they become a manager and their profit share structured by the end of their first full year. That's my vision. So they need to know why the power of five, and they need to know why two key people out of those five. It's not just because five's a nice number. It's not because five by five is easy to multiply and duplicate. It's because of the two key people that are going to follow you through to manager and put you in the position of achieving a profit share check, international travel, eagle manager, and car plan. You see, it's important that you understand the structure you need to put in place to achieve. I know a lot of people have got the pin, but no structure. Around the world, I see a lot of people, even diamonds, that have got the pin, but no infrastructure. I want the pin, but I want the infrastructure and the massive stability in the business. And I want to help other people in the team achieve that. And that's what you should want for your new distributors as well. A solid foundation which is going to pay every single month on a rise rather than a business which is built on a lot of energy excitement, may have gone manager in two seconds, but your business is up and down, up and down, up and down like this. 
You can't build a future and pay bills and school fees and the mortgage on a business where you're earning 5,000 one month and 1,000 the next. It's about structure. And if we get the structure in place in the first six to 12 months, happy days. Happy days. Think about it in this room. Everybody of you right now, between now and the end of the year, has got the chance to put this structure in place and be profit share structured, ready to qualify next year. Think about that. I think that's mind-blowing. I can't tell you what it feels like to pick up a profit share check. Okay, we're lucky. No, I've used that word again. We're not lucky. We've worked jolly hard to build our business. And yes, we've picked up big checks. But I can tell you, our first ever profit share check was £12,600. Let me tell you, I hyperventilated as much then as I did when we picked up half a million. It's not always about the money, it's about the achieving. It's about where you can take yourself and who you can become and who you can take with you. You must remember that when you're planning a business. It's not just about going through the mechanics of planning, it's about who can you become, who's coming with you, where can you take you and your team. That's the essence of building a business. So what actions do we need to take to get to manager? Gosh, I've only got five, ten more minutes. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a retail business. And we do that through launches. We do it through talking to people about the product. We use, do it by using our NDP box and using putt boxes. Again, I had the fortune to sit with an amazing young couple yesterday who haven't even been through any training on the product yet. I've got their putt boxes and I've put them out and already their orders are coming in over £100 per order from using the putt boxes. Haven't even had a product launch yet. It's not all about just doing a launch to create volume. It's about never missing an opportunity to recommend retail a product and follow through. It's not just about retailing a product, it's following through. Remember, we are looking for case credits to get to manager. The other actions that we need to take in order to get us to manager, of course, are recruiting, sponsoring and building a team. Now, I don't need to go through all of this. You've heard it spoken about today, about the importance of developing a who do you know list and about profiling people. John and I are exactly the same as Alison. We had a few more on our first list. We had 38 names. 38 names. We were part-time to begin with. If you're part-time, you speak to two to five people a day. 38 na names was probably two weeks' work. But I fell into the trap of prejudging. Oh, they won't want it. Oh, no, they're already wealthy, already successful. They're already this, they're already that. Let me tell you, it's cost us over a quarter of a million pounds by prejudging somebody because while we were happy prejudging them, Somebody else spoke to them and they joined in somebody else's business and went manager. Calculate that over eight, 17 years. It's cost us over a quarter of a million. Don't prejudge. Empty the head of every single person that you know. And once you've done that, then the reality is we need to start making contact. Now, we're all a little scared on day one about picking up the phone. I don't know why, really. You know, when I look at it logically, why are we scared to pick up the phone and say, hey, how are you doing? Hey, James, how are you doing? How's Yvonne? Just giving you a quick call. I started a phenomenal business under the umbrella of a dynamic company in the health and wellness sector. Right now, they're looking for some quality people. People are driven, ambitious, who may have been self-employed before. I know you have. And I thought of you. Do you want to come and have a look? Why are we scared to do that on day one? It's that little two-letter word that Diana talked about, the no. Because what we do is we take it personally, don't we? Oh, my God, they said no. We go home, we disembowel ourselves with a blunt spoon. It's all our fault. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. This business doesn't work. Five people have said no to me today. Good. Because if five people have said no to you today, you're closer to a Yes. So we need to start talking to people, and it's, what's really interesting is, because of technology now, we can talk to people quicker now than ever before, with Facebook, with text messages, with emails. 
So there are many, many ways to contact people, but the, the reality is it's about taking the action every single day consistently and letting go of the outcome. If you let go of the outcome and take the action and you keep going until you'll be successful. But if you worry about the no, it's going to be a long, hard journey. Attach more fear to not making the phone calls than having the no. Because if you don't make the phone calls, you're never going to live in the house of your dreams, achieve all that's important to you. You're just not going to achieve it. But if you get over the rejection, and it's hard, there's not one single leader in this room that hasn't had to manage that rejection. But when you become bigger than the feeling that it gives you when you're rejected, you'll master it. You've got to become bigger than the feeling that you have when someone rejects you. If you're part-time in the business, you need to be speaking to between two and five people a day. Every day. Six days a week. Now, you've heard, a lot of you have heard the story, but John and I were completely focused on our five a day. To the extent where one night we hadn't made our five, John got in the car, drove all the way down at midnight, put his card through the pillar box window of the service station, knowing full well that the interesting character behind the window would never even respond. His grunt was enough to describe the kind of person he was. But we had fulfilled our commitments of our five a day. That's how steely focused you've got to be if you want to be successful in forever. Not, I'll do it tomorrow. I only made four today, so I'll do six tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. You've got to work the numbers. It's a numbers business. You may hear people say it's a numbers game. This is no game. It's a numbers business. As you begin to talk to people about the business, you need to put those people into the process. And the process is very simple. Some people want to meet you for a coffee, and it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Some people who may live at a distance, it's online information. Some people who can't make meetings or whatever, you use Skype. Use whatever means that you have at your fingertips to talk to people now because forever living is on purpose as a company. And I promise you, there are people on your contact list that if you don't get to them, somebody else will. I promise you that. Don't think that your list is personal just to you. And it may not even be in forever living. Somebody may have somebody you know on their list and be asking them to join another company. We've had that happen to us. We've rung people up. Oh, yeah, I've just joined the XYZ company. <sighs> really? If you'd rung me a week ago, <laughs> really? <laughs> so you've got to get on with it. Attach a sense of urgency to all that you're doing. Network as if your life depends on it. Network as if at the end of this year, there was no more recruiting opportunity. What would you do if Rex Morn suddenly said at the end of this year, there is no more recruiting opportunity. You will only be paid on the people that you've recruited and developed up until this moment. What would you all do? What would you do? You'd go completely mental, wouldn't you? Have that kind of attitude. That's what it's all about. Take people to BPs. Allow the process to create the energy and passion and recruit them at the end of the BP. And then duplicate fast. And duplicating is very, very simple. Once somebody joins the business, you are going to sit down and go through exactly what I've just gone through with you. And it's going to be all pulled together by making a plan of them becoming a supervisor within their first four to eight weeks. Because once we've got someone at supervisor, then momentum begins to happen. And we're looking to build businesses that are in momentum, not that are just stagnant. So getting to manager is very, 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 very simple. It's putting the process in place and working it day in, day out and becoming better and better and better and better at it as the weeks and months go by. Once you're a supervisor, all you're looking for is the first three people that want to become a supervisor. Three people at 25 case credits each gives you the 75 you need for, super, for assistant manager. And to become a manager, you're looking for at least five good, strong legs to work with. Five good, strong legs will give you the momentum to get to manager and push through to senior manager and beyond as you move forward in your team. You need about 15 to 25 people to become a manager. So here's the manager plan for you. There's three plans I'm going to give you. The first one is the five-month plan.
So by the end of November, using July as the first month, every one of you that's not yet a manager who decides to decide could be by the end of November by applying this plan. But it requires some effort and focus and commitment. Could be that you want the six-month plan, and the six-month plan is fine. By the end of December, everybody in this room that isn't yet a manager will be a manager. Or it could be the seven-month plan. And the seven-month plan means that by the end of January, you will be a manager. But what this requires is you deciding to decide. You committing to doing what is necessary when you leave this room today to be successful. Not I'll give it a go, not I'll try. You can't try. You're either doing it or you're not. It's a bit like walking. I'll try to walk. Well, you're either going to walk or not. It's a bit like breathing. I'll try and breathe today. You're either doing it or you're not. And the business should be the same. And what I'd like to do now very quickly, and she's only got a couple of minutes. Where is she? Poor girl, I put this on her first thing this morning. I want to ask Faye Daly to come up and just share very quickly her story of how she went to manager picking one of these plans. And I won't burst her balloon. She'll share that with you. Please give a huge round of applause to Faye. Okay, yeah, it's on. Good talk. Hello, thank you very much. Um, my name's Faye Daly. I joined the business in September last year. Um, I'm a mum of a little boy who's two. Previous to joining Forever, I um, had a background in early years, a very successful career in early years where I was a manager, uh, early years manager of a children's centre. I loved my job and didn't think I would do anything else. That was until I fell pregnant with my son and my priorities completely changed. I didn't want to be the mum that went out to work and couldn't be there for him. I didn't want to give him to a stranger to look after and go and look after other people's children. I wanted to be that stay-at-home mum. Unfortunately for us, financially, we couldn't afford it. So I did return to work part-time, um, and then within two months was told I was being made redundant. So I had that time with my son that I wanted um, and loved, but financially, we were struggling. Um, I needed a couple of extra hundred pound a month just to help with those household bills. So I spent months and months trawling the job pages looking for that perfect job, that job that was going to give me the income that we needed, but the time to be there with my son. And unfortunately, it wasn't out there. I couldn't find it. Um, then I came across Forever. And it ticked all the boxes for me. It was um, an extra income coming in, it was home-based, it was flexible, and it was part-time. Um, it was fantastic. Um, straight away, I worked my business in the time that I had available. I didn't want it to impact upon my home life. I wanted that time my son, that's why I'd come into this. So I worked the hours that I had, but I made sure that they were quality time, I made sure that whatever I was working on was building my business. Um, and very quickly, I was able to start contributing to those household bills. And even quicker, I realized the potential of this, this business. Um, so set to work, at focusing on doing my um, five, contacting five people a day, as Jane mentioned earlier, working very, very closely with my team, making sure that I was in contact with them on a very regular basis making sure that I was helping them to focus in on their dreams and achieve their goals, and attending all the training, all the success days, making sure that my knowledge was up to date. Um, and then, bang on seven months, I turned manager. Um, and thank you. <laughs> so not only was I now bringing in that money that I needed, I was actually bringing in the money that I was earning full time back in the children's centre. But more importantly to me, I achieved my goal. I was now the stay-at-home mom I wanted to be. Um, and it's just turned our life around. Um, I've got so many goals. Me and my team have got so many goals. And I know each and every one of them are going to achieve them. And I know the future is very, very bright. And I'm so excited to be here. Just go for it. You can all do it. If I can do it, you can all do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at that. 
perfect seven-month plan. And that fitted around her needs, her wants, seven-month plan, job done, bringing in more money than she was in the job before she had children, contributing to the household, living her dream. That's how simple it is. So just in finishing, if you want to be successful, you need to have a strong, strong desire. You need to have an amazing attitude. Not, I'll give it a try, I'll see. It's I must, I will, I will not be denied. And you need to have an incredible work ethic. If you've got two of those key ingredients and not the other, it won't work. If you've got a great work ethic and a good attitude, but no desire, it won't work. If you've got a great desire and a good attitude, but you're lazy, it won't work. So those three components need to come together and you channel them in building your future with forever. And finally, you've got to be committed. You've got to be committed to doing whatever it takes. And here's the way I see it. You can't be 60% committed. How many of you have got kids? What would it be like if you went home tonight and say, I love you, Johnny. I know I'm your mum, but I'm only 65% committed to being a good mum to you. What would they say? How many of you have got a husband, a wife, a partner? How many of you say, darling, I love you so much. And I know that we're going to be happy forever, but I'm only 70% committed in this relationship. What do you think your partner would say? It's 100%, 100% commitment, underpinned with desire, attitude, and work ethic. Forever will never let you down. Make sure you don't let yourself down. It's a privilege speaking with you today. I wish you all great success, and I look forward to this stage being packed full of new managers at the end of this year. Thank you very much.